At this point, you're probably wondering what's so hard about just showing a list of dates and letting users pick one. And there's actually three things that are a bit tricky about this. First, we only want to show available dates, right? So this is my admin view. I, I can see all sponsored posts. And you can see this one has been scheduled for July 24th. So this means I need to make sure that I'm not showing July 24th in that list. And now I can't just publish uh, all sponsor posts to the client because that might give out valuable information on, you know, upcoming launches or, or marketing plans. So I want to keep that data private. So I need to find a way to only publish the dates, uh, only make the dates public, not anything else. And finally, I also don't want to just make the post to that field uh, modifiable by the client because Again, you know, I don't want to let people just change the, the dates on their posts. So uh, I, I need to come up with a special mutation to specifically change the date in this use case, but not uh, in any other case. In terms of code, that means a couple of things. First, we'll need to create a new sponsor dates uh, GraphQL query resolver. We'll need to load these dates we will need to use this information to calculate the next 15 available dates. Uh, we'll need to handle the, the form state for our, our dates. And then finally, we'll need to create a new set sponsorship date GraphQL mutation. So let's get started. Uh, let me find my code editor right here. Okay. So um, this is our uh, pick date component and it's got these three uh, subcomponents progress preview which are pretty self-explanatory and then dates this is the one that interests us so we're passing uh, the document and then also the the router because we'll need that to redirect after the form is submitted so what's going on here well let's start uh, from the bottom and let, let's look at our uh, higher order components. So um, we have two, one called with dates, one called with set sponsorship date. One's for the uh, query that loads the data. And then one's for the, the mutation that writes the date that has been picked. So how do we load data? Well, uh, where is it? Right here. We use this sponsor date uh, query resolver. If you want to double check your queries, you can always use a graphical. So we only have one sponsor date right now, but you can see it's working. So uh, how do we write that resolver? Well. We'll find it right here. It's it's not that complicated. Here's what's going on. First, we're we're finding all posts that are sponsored and scheduled in the future. Um, then we are plucking, in other words, uh, only keeping one property, which is posted at, and then we're returning this as an array. Uh, we need to do two more things. First, add it as a GraphQL query called sponsor dates with a return type array of strings and then add the resolver to our global resolvers object on the query and it's going to be called sponsored dates. Uh, once we've done that, you know, this is enough to get graphical working and this is enough to then load that data on the client with the GraphQL higher order component. Whenever we are loading data, um, you know, it's a good idea to use a loading check. So here, if data is not loading, we just show the component. If data is not loading, we can assume that our dates are loaded and we can show them. Now, this is where it gets a bit complicated because, you know, you do want to, you don't want to just show which dates are uh, booked already. You want to show which dates are not booked. Uh, and also you want to show the next 15 available dates. So you can't just, you know, 
calculate the next 20 dates and take out all the booked dates because there might be no dates left. So this is why we have a while loop. Basically what we do is we loop through uh, every next Monday for the future. Uh, if, if it's available, we add it to an array. If it's not, we don't. And then we keep doing that until we have 15 dates in our array. And we're doing all of that client side just in our, uh, in our React component. Uh, once this is done, we submit uh, the form. The submit handler will call the mutation with the date and the post ID, and then redirect to the next step of the flow. So the mutation is right here. Here's what it does. First of all, uh, you'll, you'll uh, see that I've left a small note for myself that I'm not double checking the availability. So in theory, Yes, uh, a client could um, schedule their post on the same date as somebody else's if they really wanted to. Uh, but I thought this is easy enough for me to manually debug later on. So uh, for now, I'm trusting the client with just the date. I am checking though that the post is the post is sponsored. Uh, this way, people can just use this mutation to um, set any of their posts to any date. Uh, and also I'm, I'm checking that they do own the post. So you can't change the date of somebody else's sponsored post. So all that makes sense. Um, as always with uh, dates, you need to be careful with time zones. So use UTC mode for moment or, or do whatever it takes. And then we'd return the ID and post it at. Um, here you can see when I define a GraphQL uh, type for the mutation. I'm using the post return type. And this is called Y because Apollo on the client will automatically update the document in the store if it knows that it's a post. So I'm not just not returning random JSON or, or a return success or whatever. I'm returning a post object with these two properties. We're Almost done. One more little detail I want to point out uh, here. Let me find my page again. We are getting the post ID from the router, and uh, but the with list or sorry with document container we are using here expects a document ID property. Whereas the, the router has this route params .post ID. So to make that link between both, we use the, the map props utility from recompose. And all that does is, you know, you get the props and you can map them to a new object and pass that on to the next container in the chain. So that's really handy rather than, then, you know, building a whole new React component and you can just use that to translate, uh, router params.post ID into document ID. So that's it for uh, step two, picking dates. We're almost there. Next step will be a lot more fun because we'll use the checkout component.